Well, good evening, good evening. The sun's down. Nighttime is coming. And I'm just out here checking a few things, making sure the barrels are locked up. Um, I left the barrels open the other night. I told you, I think I mentioned in another video, and um, the frogs had a, uh, <coughs> they had quite the orgy, I guess. I had one frog, and there was two frogs, and the other night I came out while it was raining, I fed the plants, and it must have been 30 frogs, and uh, the next morning I got 10,000, 20,000 eggs here. Three. I'll take that. I'll take that for sure. For zero. Two. Two parts per million. I'll take that too. <clears throat> you can't get better than that. That helped. I've had RO filters that didn't do that well. That's really good. <clears throat> That's rainwater off my 15 year old asphalt shingle roof. Crystal clear all the way down to the bottom. Of the all the way down to the bottom. <clears throat> That's what I mean. Just a, with trees and all kinds of debris and everything else, it comes off that clean. It comes off around 6, 8, 6, 9 pH. It comes off at around 2, 3 parts per million. And this is average, typical. Um, <clears throat> my tap water runs 160 parts per million. And it's not usable for orchids. I only feed 160 parts per million. Tops, 125 to 150 usually. And that's with nutrients and everything all mixed together total. So I'm not going to use a water that's 100 already stronger than what I'm feeding normally feeding my orchids. I typically want to keep my water or whatever unknowns, as I call it, unknowns. And there's unknowns in tap water. There's unknowns in rainwater. If you don't know what's in it, I try and keep that at 10% minimum, maximum. And I'll be honest, I really keep it at 5%. So let's say I'm feeding 150 parts per million. 10% of that would be 15 parts per million. So I would want to keep my rainwater or my tap water or whatever I use to mix my nutrients with around 15 parts per million or less. Does that make sense? I don't want it to get that strong. I don't want to mix a bunch of nutrients with um, things that I don't know what's in there. Um, my tap water contains chlorine. It contains um, a lot of sodium. It contains anti-foaming agents. It contains calcium carbonate, but calcium carbonate is not water-soluble. <clears throat> I've spoken about that before. It's calcium, but it's not easily absorbed by your plants. If your plants are outside in a very, very, very warm environment like South Florida or another country like that, and they've been outside for a while and they have, you know, micro micro microbial back microbial activity around the root zone because they've been out there for a while and they've gotten, you know, established. <clears throat> They will probably be able to break some of that calcium down from the tap water or from your hose water, but you're still going to have issues with black rot. Black rot is the, is the end result of calcium deficiency. Anybody that tells you you don't need to use, don't need to add calcium to your mix, or you don't need to use calcium with your orchids is probably going to have issues, or doesn't use calcium with your orchids is probably going to suffer issues with black rot occasionally. <clears throat> it's just that simple. Keep your water as pure as you can get it. Rainwater is one of the best ways. If I didn't have if I didn't have access in an easy way to um, gather rainwater like I like I can, I would probably be um, using an RO system. The cleaner the water, the better. Over 25 parts per million, I won't use water for anything other than just flushing with. So once my rain barrels get too much accumulated salts or debris in them and they start getting over 25 parts per million, I won't use it except for just flushing. And even then, I don't like to use it. Over 50, I usually won't use it at all, period. I won't let my plants touch it. I won't let it touch my plants. Not an orchid. Now, for the yard, that's fine, but not for orchids. They like pure water, as clean a water as possible. <clears throat> they can't take all the extra salts. They can't take all the extra sodium and stuff that's in the water. Um, it builds up on the roots. It builds up on the leaves, etc., etc., so... That's all I needed. I just wanted to do. I just wanted to recheck my rain barrels, make sure everything's locked up for the evening, so I don't have a uh, another frog issue. So I've got plenty, plenty of fresh, clean rainwater now, and um, should be good to go. Um, I'll show you a couple of the uh, the wife brought home a couple of new lilies for me to plant today. She loves lilies. This is a beautiful peach one. It has a beautiful peach bloom on it. Really, really nice one, about 20 inches tall. This one's a little bit taller, a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger plant, but 
has a gorgeous bright yellow bloom with a dark orange kind of a yellowish throat and that beautiful red kiss on it beautiful bloom we got a beautiful night coming I can hear the frogs already have a wonderful evening everybody thanks for listening thanks for watching always thanks for those great comments thanks for all those questions Get out there and work in your garden.